It's not always true though. Mm, maybe my not. My dog, my dog's ears are just heavy. Golden oh, retrievers true. can't lift their yeah. ears up. They, yeah. They're always down. Do they perk them like half the way up though when they're like excited or no? If I say the word food or outside, that is <laughs> perk up a little bit. Yes, nice. but not normally. <laughs> In the bottom left here on Giganatha, we have the blue Protoss player who needs no introduction because he is the best. He is M. Kenning. And in the top right hand side, playing from his extremely white room, it is Jonathan Snow! Okay, cats. We got ourselves a great matchup here. Doesn't look like we're getting a cheese. So I'll throw you a quick question, and that, that is definitely something that I imagine happens more in the US on, on Halloween or around it. You guys have uh, have you have you ever been a part of a, of a mischief night? You ever gone and toilet no. papered somebody's trees? <laughs> no, I haven't. But uh, but I've heard of it. I was I was thinking it was uh, I was thinking of an analogy with the toilet papering uh, for for future on the last series against Nina, right? Like where, when when Sue was saying future knocked on Nina's door, and I was thinking, oh, maybe he was trick or treating, and then you know just came back with the SUVs, and that was no, akin to toilet pegging. papering. <laughs> <laughs> Something there, of the some like. That'll, that'll mess with the paint. That'll mess with the paint. I like to think of that when, when M. Cannon goes and leaves all those sprays like he left in Jon Snow's base. Mm -hmm. he, to he toilet papered him, man. He threw it. Oh, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to clean all that off, especially if it rains. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, if it I'm rains cool, on that night, then your life is miserable. Weed straight up in my neighborhood. They're, they're straight up. They, they bring the police out. People just go on patrols being like, if they saw anybody holding toilet paper or eggs anywhere, like the stores wouldn't sell them on those nights. It's just wild. It's yes, wild. indeed. And both seriously. of these players, I mean, I'm canning definitely ahead in the in in that department, right? He has dropped two more sprays, like pretty much on cooldown. So he's done a really good job of uh, of keeping up ahead of Jon Snow in those mind games. Who has tried to retaliate? There's a, a few GGs thrown out on the side yes. of uh, M canning, but not not near this man. Yes, and you know, I I understand that uh, there there are many there are many of those Zergs out there who who think that I'm not on their side for whatever reason. But I will happily let you know <laughs> and point out that Jon Snow used, as I was saying, you can actually spray with your overlords, Zergs. You have yeah. such a high skill ceiling for your for your memeing, for your shenaniganery. Okay, there are so <laughs> many silly things that you could do with the ability to spray from an overlord. Please, you guys, you guys gotta take advantage of this blessing that you've been given a little bit more, okay? Oh, that's all I want to say. Looks great, okay. great creep tuber snipe. Somehow does not lose the adept, and there's the void ray. So, cats. Yesterday, I assume, I assume that because he, Jon Snow is not as good as Scarlet. No offense, I'm just gonna say that. Uh, mm -hmm. M. Kenning will probably try to do what he did yesterday because he did do it three games in a row, and it almost worked the second time. That's true, but the first game he was able to win with it. He went one void ray. Took a pretty quick third base, and then, without really doing a whole lot else, dropped two Stargates and a Fleet Beacon. Like, very... What? Yeah. Like, he would just go pretty much straight there. Like, plus one air weapons right after Warp Gate was done, that sort of thing. And he started a Twilight Council this game, so I think his expectation is that Jon Snow might just do, like, a, you know, like a two and a half base or somewhat saturated third base um, Hydra push or something of that like that. But... Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, I do wonder if that's what we're going to see in this series or if it's going to happen at least once because Scarlet obviously adjusted after the first game and was able to take home uh, the second two in a row, right? Yes, indeed. I think that uh, that M. Canning has obviously looked at that situation and thought, okay, if I open one Void Race, certainly Jon Snow ha has been looking at what I did against Scarlet. So maybe Jon Snow is, is going to look to punish this with some sort of timing attack, and maybe that is where M. Canning's different transition with the extra gateways, and in this case with the resonating glaives, can start paying off, right? So it's so, so he's kind of playing a, a super long series from, from yesterday's information, and I really like it for the can. Yeah. I think this is a good adjustment to make. He's giving himself something else that he can use to obviously put on pressure, defend it possibly if necessary, but most importantly, it's not the same thing not the same exact look from before and this is a nice 
Nidus going up for Jon Snow. And he he did try to bust out the Nidus play in his series yesterday. I think he was playing against Future. Uh, it did not go very well for him, but he, he tried to do a little bit of a Nidus rush. It got shut down by uh, some Marines and a tank. Now Adept with Glaives and the attack speed. I think they can chew a worm down, but they, they need to be there. And this is what makes me a little bit nervous, Cats, because the Adepts, they're crossing the halfway point on the map, and Jon Snow's Ling just saw that too. Yeah, and that's the Ling that's most likely to drop the, the Nidus on location there. It stopped already. Now the Adepts need to do some damage. There are already Roaches here in play for, Ro for Roach Snow. I almost called him for Jon Snow. And he is dropping the ne the Nidus. So as soon as he can deal with these Adepts uh, on the defense, he will surely go on offense. And I'm not sure that I'm going to be ready for it. Yeah, this, uh, the, the Adepts not really able to find much purchase or do anything. And Zewam explodes outside of the natural expansion. Jon Snow getting ready to lay siege to this. The Adepts were recalled. So it's not that there's nothing here. But the question now becomes, is there enough to defend it here as Ravagers will start to morph? And that Void Ray, Void Rays do not have armor by default. Oh. So they take they take that damage pretty quickly from these Queens, and they are not necessarily going to be great at defending against this. That first one immediately dies, Oh, which it's just, it's just a hard, it's hard. That third base is also just completely screwed here too. Yeah, here's where Jon Snow can do anything. He's already dropping the or making drones, right? Anticipating, okay, your army is big, but it's stuck behind this wall. Jon Snow still has this wall to take for free. And Canning can never really leave his base before the wall is taken down because it's such a narrow choke that, you know, Jon Snow would just kill unit by unit so fast. Um, and I think this is the perfect situation for Jon Snow to kind of just take a fourth. He's doing everything that he needs to be doing, adding 10 drones, adding a spire. So looking for that transition. A very similar setup to what we saw from Elaser earlier in the in the European part of things. Yeah, well, we we had this discussion right about getting the things done back home while the Nidus does the contain, whether or not it was enough damage. I mean, killing the third base has to be really nice, right? Getting the cybernetics yeah. core, you're preventing him from even being able to get upgrades if he had wanted those for for air units. And there is a Phoenix that starts as this third base gets rebuilt, but. M. Canning seems like he's kind of been set adrift, right? He needs to correct mm -hmm. course. He needs to raise his sails and try to find some wind to push him forward because right now, treading water is not going to be enough to come back in this game after Jon Snow takes this fourth and drones up all of his bases on the back of that Nidus attack. Yes, indeed. And Muta are going to be so difficult to deal with because, uh, I mean... It looks like M. Canning has caught wind of it at least because there is a Phoenix in production and also cannons in mineral lines. But even then, it's going to be very difficult to defend against Mutas just poking and killing a little bit here and a little bit there. They'll also be very good against any sort of War Prism gameplay, even though M. Canning is, uh, to his own admission, known to forget that unit sometimes in favor of, of making too many or, mo or more disruptors, right? He really values the robo production time for those heavy tech units, and it's difficult to blame him because he's so far behind. He has to make something happen soon, Nate, like you were saying. Yeah, we have the Mutalisks coming out, and while we were talking about those Phoenix that were being added, it's just such a piecemeal solution, right? You, if you if you try to build the counter to everything, then mm -hmm. you'll, you know, you'll die to anything, right, is one of, the, yeah. one of the things that we say when we talk to people about, well, can you just build the counter to every single unit and then never lose? Well, if that was the case, then StarCraft would be uh, a pretty awful game and no one would care about this and no one would want to watch it because what makes it good is that there's a lot of different ways that you can solve a puzzle and right now M. Canning does not really have anything to, to target the fact that Jon Snow is just running away economically he's eating the map and this third base finally up and running but there's not too much to back it up and a fleet beacon is starting while corruptors are in production that's that one's making me a little bit nervous here Paolo Yes, indeed. I mean, a successful defense of the first bunch of Muta with those three Phoenix and the setup with the cannons. So that is some breathing room for him, for him canning, but he was reset so far back. And yeah, he is going for that carrier transition, presumably. But with uh, Corruptors out in the air, they are going to be the, the counter to just about anything that you can make short of Void Rays from that, uh, from that starport. And it's difficult to imagine that the choice right now to make is Void Rays, right? Like you want to you want to make chunkier units or, or AOE units on the ground or something that deals with the masses of Zerg that are coming at you in the in the near future. Yeah, starts up the Phoenix range, but I'm not sure if this is a misread that he's expecting it to be like a tremendous amount of Mutalisks as the commitment. Ooh. 
Either way, the Adepts do finally get some drones. It's not going to be a crazy amount of kills, but I think five is, you know, at the very least, it's, it's one of those things that say, hey, we're, we're trying to make a little bit of progress here, but he needs to, I, I don't know. Is this just become the turtle? Right? Yep. It may just yeah, be I think that's what harder. It is. I don't I don't know if you could do anything here other than try to turtle. It's gonna be very difficult. I mean you can poke here and there with with little adept squads, maybe try to get a war prism out there, though that's that's gonna be difficult with the mutas and corrupt corruptors roaming. This base will get found. Unfortunately for Jon Snow, and as soon as it is, look at the blob of red heading towards it. It's very difficult for him canning to abandon his third position because then that'll be vulnerable. So he has to sit atop of this ramp as Jon Snow choose on his fourth base. Yeah, and that's that's one of the tricky parts. There's not a direct ground access to that mm -hmm. base, so you need to have everything in place to not only defend that, but pick off the other expansions. And here's the thing, those Corruptors, they get in the way of the star, uh, excuse me, they get in the way of the Phoenix, while the Mutalist can keep poking back. And at the end of the day, oh, that super shot looks like, ah, oh, just one Ravager. Oh my God. Is he gonna be able to save the Nexus? This is if really he does. Thing. If he can actually finish this base and wow. secure it and set it up, and defend it, I mean, my head might explode because that's exactly the kind of dramatic twist that M. Canning, he probably planned it from the start, let's be honest. Okay, Mother's <laughs> coming out now. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, a literally few one to of talk everything about is the build. <laughs> yeah, like a few, a few things to mention though, Nate. I think for, for the side of Jon Snow, he was preemptively making Corruptors, we pointed to this, but he only made three and then he stopped, right? So, so M. Canning reaches this point where he actually has enough Phoenix to easily batter down three Corruptors because that's not too many and they are bullying the Mutas, especially with the with the extra range. And another mistake I think that Jon Snow just made was not shoving enough units into that fourth base to guarantee the kill. And it was kind of easy to do that, I feel like, because I'm canning never really wants to walk carelessly on that low ground up until he has at least pushed back the Corruptors and the Mutas. So, oh, 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 oh. Well, there's the M-Canning Disruptors that we've been waiting for. We did not Oof. really get to see, uh, not really get to see this just yet in the game. Oh! That's, that's what I was really excited about. He had some gnarly Disruptor hits against Scarlet yesterday, but the Corruptors are in large enough numbers now, as you were talking about, Cass getting on top of the Phoenix. The Banelings trying to force their way through the Disruptors to get to the probe. So Disruptors not only getting tons of kills, but preventing a ton of them. And at the end of all of this, Cass, not a perfect defense, but a pretty damn good one, all things said and done. Yeah, really, because what Jon Snow did, there was shoved little parts of his army to go into the main and the natural of M. Canning, but M. Canning was already set up in those bases with shield, batteries, and cannons, so all that did was effectively just weaken the army of Jon Snow for the frontal push, and M. Canning, with a couple of those good disruptor shots that you've been talking about, is able to kind of stabilize here. It's kind of, it's kind of nuts. And we're seeing a return of, uh, of, of a bit of a usage on that worm there. I do find that interesting. Just kind of using it to get and block that potential fourth base as M. Canning's Southeast expansion is under attack. Good overcharge. Keeps the photon cannons kicking. And I love that because there's really only one way to get into that corner base. So once it's set up and if there's a good defense there, it's mm -hmm. going to take you know a disproportionate amount of attacking forces to break it compared to almost any other uh you know extremal base right that's off, off on the side that's not connected to everything else it kind of sits mm -hmm. on its own but it's a lot easier to hold this particular one and there's the carrier production we got zealots hacking and whacking and smacking so john snow tried to play a lot around with that roach ling ravager and now the cryptors i was going to ask cats has has the, the lack of like a step forward tech wise been a bit of a problem here? Or is this okay for Jon Snow to just keep playing with largely what feels like just Ling Ravager Banely? Yeah, I think I think it's a very slow transition. He really needs this. Will he be able to get the mothership? It looks like it's very important that he picks up this base. This is what this composition is intended to do. It looks like he's finally gonna find it. Will he be allowed and able to retreat? If he oh, is, then Jon Snow oh, oh. will certainly secure an av oh! A very God. advantageous position, but instead it's Mkani who has killed nearly the entire the entire army. And this is what you were talking about, that base, Nate. It is so secluded that your army can get trapped in there, right? And now Mkani has a huge army out on the map. He, he really needs to put it to use, though. Yeah. That was not a minus 400-400. Feels good, man. Very nice. Feels good indeed. But Mkani needs to apply pressure right now, Nate. I mean, uh, uh, Jon Snow... As far as bases out on the map, he's getting out of control. M. Canning needs to kill at least a couple of bases with this, I, I feel like. Otherwise, it's just going to get harder and harder. 
Yeah, I, the four, losing the fourth, I think, is still almost game losing for him because the economy is oh. completely gone. These corruptors find a poor carrier oh. out on his own, and that is well, that's that's an inexcusable loss, and it, it's unfortunate that it happens, but. M. Canning's going to clear out that northeast base. He does have a few disruptors and a dream, which, as we know, can make anything possible. Oh, there's, there's bailing stuff. They're going to try to find the center mass. The disruptors go out. Not going to be able to hit anything with the first two oh. shots. Second shot gets a good amount of the banes, but the corruptors with the overseers uh. will be able to chase down the mothership as well as the carriers. And it's just a handful of stalkers now to try to fight the Zerg swarm. Yeah, I really feel like I'm kind of should have crossed the map right after clearing that army of Jon Snow. He gave him a little bit too much time, I think, to stabilize. And now Jon Snow is looking poised to take this game cleanly as he is going to be able to siege this base or not. I guess he's just going to pull back his entire army to deal with a run by. So I'm kind of actually finding the third of Jon Snow the base? with just what? The three DPs. Yeah. Okay. He somehow he just he just straight up sniped the third. Okay. Okay. Huh. There's still plenty of other bases for Jon Snow, though. Money is not really the problem for the Zerg player, but uh, yeah, the, the I, I saving grace. ETs, anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But the saving grace, more than that, perhaps, is that Jon Snow pulls his, his entire army from from where he was just about to punish that fourth base again, which I think would have been game ending. He instead pulls back his entire army and still loses the base, right? So it's kind of like a like if this happens a few more times, then Mkanning could get back into this game. Yeah. Uh, these links trying to make their way over towards the natural. Didn't lose too many probes to the Bane links that went for his third. Or excuse me, the third, yeah. But nice work, unfortunately, man. yeah, his, his defense against that has been pretty solid. He's not losing nothing, but he's, you know, that you could lose your whole mineral line to six plus two Bane links, right? They one shot probes. They're, they're quite strong. Yeah. yeah, if they connect, your entire mineral line will be evaporated. This uh, Corruptor is still looking for carrier spawning, but I'm kind of has nothing spawning right now, actually, in production. <laughs> it's a Nexus and a Pylon, and that's about it, as Jon Snow is going to look to collapse onto this, and he can trade over and over. Stalkers are not the best unit to trade in straight-up engagement, so it's looking very, very difficult for the Khan, who has one more storm, I think, to rely on, perhaps to give it enough time, but he's going to be kiting an army that is, I mean, chasing him as a, as a formality at this point because they already did what they what they came to. They denied that fifth base. Yeah, exactly. They shut the base down. They're going to kill everything else that's left of this army. And I yep. think that that's going to mostly do it for this first game. If M. Canning wants to stay in and slug it out still, I, I completely get it. But this uh, it's a hundred supply discrepancy now. Jon Snow has taken almost every single base on his side of the map. M. Canning while he did finally secure that fourth, it, it came at such a time that the income is still not really there because the main is completely mined out. The natural is, yeah, about completely mined out. And there's only four mineral patches left at the third. Yes, indeed. Here comes the big attack from Jon Snow. Banelings are going to come flanking in those high templars they're gonna have to storm for their lives beautiful blink forward to try to absorb some of those bailing hits and actually all the bailings are absorbed by the by the immortal unfortunately for him he's gonna need a lot more than that and he just doesn't have it the can is gonna tap out and Jon snow taking the 1-0 lead in the series very well done very well done by Jon snow gets himself into a very nice position and I have to say, I was excited to see that M. Canning was mixing it up a little bit with the opener, but it was also, yeah, it was unfortunate that, that that Nidus attack still ended up being such a pain because it felt like Jon Snow was thinking, okay, he's probably going to do this same thing that he always does. And mm -hmm. well, yes, he, you know, he went for a Void Ray. He didn't immediately just go straight into the Fleet Beacon and the, you know, the extra two Stargates like we've seen him do before. He kind of made sure to, to cross a couple more T's, dot a few more lowercase J's, but he didn't really he didn't really have it still to deal with just that Nidus attack. And that's that's unfortunate. At that he never really recovered from that point. He almost did when he kept the when he got the fourth and kept it alive the first time. But as soon mm -hmm. as that fourth was finally killed, that's where I felt like, okay, you know, this is this is the point of no return. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a few very easy adjustments to make there for Mcanning. For example, I think having a battery at that natural base would have gone, uh, would have would have done a, a great deal of work for him. Maybe allowing his army to stay outside of that uh, of that wall off that he had. He had two batteries coming up at the third, but they weren't done, and the third is kind of secluded from the rest of his base. So Jon Snow just got a brilliant advantage with that Nidus. And not to forget also the Nidus was Queen Roach against Adepts and Void Rays. 
also a pretty good matchup stylistically for Jon Snow. Even though he was looking to counter something else, he kind of countered this one too. A bit of an unfortunate situation. As we're going to go to Romantis side next. And yeah, else, yeah. M Canning. I, I like the control. We still get to see it even in that game where those disruptors did just about barely almost get him like fully back into this game. Yeah. He's got the base snipe thing going. And I felt like one of the things he didn't do uh, a ton of, or really, I really feel like he didn't do enough of it yesterday against Scarlet was going for those, those counter attacks, the run buys. And this was definitely an area where he got a lot of work done in this map. So he just needs to tighten things up a little bit. Got to be careful about the Nidus attacks, right? Those are always going to be so tricky. And it, or sometimes it really does just boil down to you have to scout it. You have to figure out what's going on with your hallucinated Phoenix or what have you. You need to figure out what the Zerg player is doing if you want to you know, be safe. And mm -hmm. I hope to see him step it up going into game number two. I love, I love the can. I won't hide my bias. It's one of my favorite players to watch. I want to see him show it. Yeah, we'll see if he's going to be able to bring it here. I'm completely with you, and I really like the comment that you made during the game as well. Uh, as far as not diversifying too much, right? Because you get spread a little bit too thin. And the can, I think, does fall into that pitfall sometimes where he, where he is actively adding maybe too much static defense instead of, say, just making sure that his wall is, is plugged. And sometimes, like that last game, it helped him out a great deal because the Jon Snow uh, run bys got in and they were wildly unsuccessful, and that was part of what what uh, made it so that he could almost come back. But uh, but yeah, I think he has to he has to maybe look to take a few more risks. Standing on the or on the bottom right hand side of the map, it is for Sidestorm Gaming, Jon Snow. gives me some final fight from banjo kazooie vibes in the northwest <laughs> we have the red protoss player he is m canning i think harry potter vibes yeah yeah a little bit a little bit of harry potter vibes m canning's from the north northeast i think as well ryan he's like he's somewhere up there vermont or something he's got a bunch of woods out there he's always putting out funny videos i think um they did there was, was was it one of those series videos or something i know we've we've gotten to see a bit a bit of a peek into john snow's uh career as well because he spent a lot of his time as a pro player still going through school uh i remember being able to commentate john snow actually you probably did too right we both did a lot of the the collegiate starcraft stuff over mm -hmm. the years yeah and he was one of those players that was like really good kind of had that that balance thing going and then I don't know what he's been up to, like IRL type recently. Although you know, many of us haven't been up to too much, but mm -hmm. the the StarCraft performance for him didn't really seem to kick off quite the way that I thought it would. But I mean, for all I know, you know, he want, he's doing this still as like a side thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the case for a lot of North American players, and we were talking a little bit about this. But yeah, a lot a lot of younger North American players have to rely on on, on and getting earlier jobs and internships and. That kind of thing is just much more common and there's like less of a social structure to fall back on. So a lot of these guys do this part time and Jon Snow is definitely one of those. Yeah. So I don't mean to take it too hard on any of these guys because I, I completely understand where they're coming from. Uh, mm -hmm. Being a self-employed person uh, myself, Cats, and I, I assume assume you somewhat as well, if you would describe yeah. yourself in such a manner. Mm -hmm. We we out here. We out here. <laughs> I'm canning with the Stargate again. Not super surprising. There were actually some disruptor hits he landed yesterday, though, where he got like 15 hydras per hit. It was it was one of the most gross things I've ever seen. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, that does sound disgusting. And disruptors are so very good. I think that opening void rays into disruptors or or uh, colossi would fit, will fit uh, M canning style really well. So I would love to see him shake it up a little bit like that, but it seems like he's very fond of those carrier transitions. I'm not sure if that's going to work against a player like Jon Snow, who is very mid-game oriented, as you saw and you were pointing out uh, to last game. He's the type of player that will stay on that army for very, very long and try to make it work. Yeah, and I, I wonder, you know, if that's something else that M. Canning has to consider, even between different types of Zerg opponents, but Jon Snow, I mean, that game was Ling Bane Ravager for the most part. With some roaches, obviously you need roaches to get Ravagers, but 
it was one of those <laughs> things where I'm like, it's hard because you're trying to get this big techie army. And I completely get it too, because the disruptors are awesome versus that. You know, you've yeah. got some big, thick boys in those Ravagers. And when you got big clumps of lings, he he made some awesome disruptor hits in that first game. And if he can reproduce that without taking the economic damage, well, then that's when you see, you know, the can man dominate as he usually does. Yes, indeed. He's following up this time with an Oracle. One thing that I personally like to do when I go Oracle after Void Ray, Nate, is to kind of clear the path for the Oracle with the Void Ray, right? Just kind of run a straight line so that you know for a fact that your Oracle won't be spotted or where it's going won't be spotted if he follows the same trail for the most part. Instead, uh, uh, the can is going to go searching uh, for other Overlords on the outskirts of the map. And, the, and uh, sadly, the Oracle will get spotted, however, by Surgings and not an Overlord. Uh, it will have to pull back and maybe defend this base. It really doesn't need to, but it's it's going to. And uh, and now it stands almost no potential to do any damage across. Now, cats, five extractors are being made at the same time while a lair is building, about to finish. So it makes me want to ask a very weird question as this Void Ray is going to roll up, try to kill an overlord, and then turn 360 degrees and walk away. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, and the answer is yes, Nate. I think we're gonna see Mutas. I don't I don't know that anything else makes sense here, or a lot of sense. The can is gonna spot all of these gases as well. And there is the spire coming up, as you were foreshadowing. Yeah, well, we say so there's the spire, as these adepts are gonna continue to bounce around, definitely trying to generate a little bit more value for him. I think these adepts did, did very well, especially considering that he didn't have to buy glaives this time to kill just five drones. Um, but we do have the three Stargates. They're already here. The Fleet Beacon is done. <laughs> the before the six minute mark, baby. Get in, that loser. We're banana. building carriers. Yeah, get in, loser. I love that. Yeah, I'm not sure how he's going to be able to even afford these right now. It looks like one at a time is going to be started. And I mean, carriers are actually going to do surprisingly well against Muta. However, if Jon Snow catches wind of this with how early his fire is, if he just goes Corruptor, Snape, oh, this is not going to be pretty. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, if M. Canning kind of was to get a whiff of, of this, of what's happening, mm. it's not like he can't just play it slow. I mean, he went past the Spire, so if he recognizes that, I think the key, really, it, it's it's hard, even with Corruptors early, to try to push into somebody that has carriers, you know, like even a Blade Ray or two, if they build a couple batteries, right? Like maybe... Couple shield yeah. batteries for sure, photon cannon or two. Just make it so that the pro the Zerg player doesn't isn't able to say I can definitely kill the carriers if I just build like ten corruptors right now. Because if they can do that, then yeah, you're you're in you're in for some some troubles. Yeah, I really love what you're saying there. Uh, shield batteries are gonna be particularly effective with carriers because they have such high HP. So obviously there's a lot of HP to work with to regenerate and, and to chew through for any given unit there. So the shield battery and the shield battery overcharge as well as cannons already situated on these three bases. I like what Mcanning is doing because he's now securing his three bases. He took them very greedily and his transition was very greedy up until this point, but now he's adding that defense, right? He's saying, all right, come at me now. I'll be ready for your attack. And it's looking pretty good, actually. I like it. Good setup. Yeah, I love this wall off, by the way. This is kind of what I've been talking about a little bit on this map that I've wanted to see. like. I know that people have their opinions about slow or turtley types of games, but as a, as someone who likes to move the chess pieces a little slowly, shall we say, I think <laughs> this map gives you some pretty good opportunities to focus where your opponent is allowed to attack you. And the wall of gates on that side, opening this mineral, is creating a very forward-facing infrastructure that's going to yeah. require uh, a very specific type of approach to break down and then can move forward to this gas base. And I think it'll be really hard to fo force his attention elsewhere once he moves out this direction. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's cool that uh, Jon Snow has spotted it as early as he has, though, because now he's going to have a chance to deny this forward base. And uh, and the one thing that I'm kidding, of course, gives up with this wall off is that low ground fourth, uh, which otherwise is maybe the most common fourth. And and it's it's got a narrow path uh, follow, uh, following to it, right? It's not really a wide open base, so it's not a bad base for Protoss. Um, this base now, uh, this is what I was talking about. Jon Snow knows about it. He can now kind of make work of this more open space. 
Yeah, and this is the hard part, because engaging into that is very risky. If you lose your interceptors, you pretty much lose the game here. So you need to make sure that oh. you don't actually force that big fight just yet until you have your cannons, until you have your batteries. Oh, well, that's your huge. Your ward's going to eat a bunch of the hydras. That's going to open the door in a big, big way. The queens have yet to actually join this force. And with that, it's going to buy a little bit more time for M Canning to situate some of this infrastructure, getting another oh. stasis trap placed. This is really, really important for him to kill those hydras as they come back, because if everything gets to fight together, it does become a little bit more tricky for the Protoss player. Jon Snow did bring those queens forward, cats, but man, oh man, there's only seven interceptors left for M Canning. Yeah, this is a problem. I mean, it's such an uncharacteristic attack by Jon Snow. It's still not all said and done. I'm not sure who will get the better trade here. Uh, I would love to see a battery overcharge if it, if it, if it is available. It must be but it's not gonna happen and now it's uh, Jon Snow continuing to push on forward and the problem for Mechanic Nate is that he made so many void rates I think anticipating that Corruptors would be the scariest thing that mm -hmm. he was gonna be dealing with and void rates are just awful against Hydras. Yeah, void rates are one of the worst units that you can build in StarCraft unless you're against a very specific situation that favors them. Unfortunately, Jon Snow was able